Our next linear transformation is rotation by an angle alpha, denoted by this symbol right here. And we'll once again start by introducing the transformation, considering a couple of examples, and then we'll want to know whether the transformation is linear. And if it is linear, we'll talk about its eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So once I define the transformation, you may want to pause the video and try to answer this, these upcoming questions on your own. So here is how the transformation goes. Given a vector and an angle alpha, this works for a general angle alpha, but in my example, I will consider alpha equals pi over four, but once again, works for any alpha. You rotate the vector in counterclockwise direction. That's the convention. If you wanted rotating in the other direction, you'll just pick a negative value for alpha by that angle. So it keeps its length, but it gets rotated. So you have to write that this is the image of u, so it's r sub alpha of u. Let's consider one more example. Hopefully it won't become too messy. We'll consider this vector. We'll call it w. Let's consider a different one, just so that, just so that we avoid the mess. This will be our vector w. All right. Now let's rotate the vector w by 45 degrees in this case. So let me be very careful here. I believe that's pretty good. So this is r sub alpha of w. All right, that's what the transformation does. I think it's pretty clear. So is it linear or not? There's something that feels very much nonlinear about rotations. We think of linear things as stretching or flipping uh, but rotations, is this a linear transformation? Well, let's once again do the summation test and then multiplication by a scalar. And if the order doesn't matter, then it's linear. So once again, we'll just do the summation test and then you can do the multiplication by a scalar test later. So let's use a different color. Here is u plus w. Right here. Here is its tip. Once again, I won't draw it. And now let's rotate the result by 45 degrees, which would land it right about here. So if this is u plus w, then this is u plus w rotated. Rotated u plus w. And is it the same as the sum of rotated u? and rotate a W. Well, let's visualize. Well, I'll draw it in the parallelogram rule. I cheated a little bit. I kind of knew where it had to land, but it looks like it sure matches. So once again, it doesn't matter whether we rotate the individual elements first, the individual vectors first, and then add up the results, or if we add up the two vectors first and then rotate the result by 45 degrees, the result is the same. So this is a linear transformation. And in retrospect, it's not so surprising because it just sort of rotates the whole plane rigidly. So the whole, everything comes together. So whatever picture, the summation picture was originally, just the whole thing gets rotated, the individual vectors and their sum. So I don't know if it's helping you, makes sense to me. And multiplication by a scalar test would go similarly. And yes, we would conclude that this transformation is linear. Now, is this transformation, what are the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this transformation? And I think it becomes quite apparent that except for special values of alpha, there are no eigenvalues and eigenvectors. By the very definition of this transformation, in particular when alpha equals pi over 4 in this example, all the vectors turn and none of them ends up a multiple of the pre-image. The zero vector doesn't count. As we discussed previously, the zero vector is never a candidate for an eigenvector. Zero eigenvalue, sure. Zero eigenvector, not interesting, never considered. It should be a non-zero vector. So for almost all angles except a few exceptions, there are no eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now if alpha was a special value like pi, 180 degrees, then every vector becomes minus itself. So all there will be eigenvalues that equal minus one, 
and any vector can be considered a corresponding eigenvector. So the entire plane would be the eigenspace, and you can choose any two vectors as representatives. We'll talk about matching eigenvalues a little bit later. Those are called eigenvalues of multiplicity greater than one. Sometimes they're called degenerate eigenvalues. Okay, another example would be alpha equals two pi, and that's just identity. So that's another example where there would be some eigenvectors and corresponding eigenvalues, but once again for a very special value of alpha. But for a general value of alpha, no eigenvalues and no eigenvectors. But let's see if we can extract some kind of algebraic relationship as we did in our previous examples with reflection and projection. And in fact, we can't write a couple of very pretty things on the board. Here is one that's very hard to argue with, that if you apply R beta to a vector, and, well, it's kind of writing from left to right, but thinking right to left. So here we have a situation, I won't write the argument, where you apply alpha rotation by the vector, by, where you apply rotation by the angle alpha first, followed by rotation by the angle beta. And of course, the net result of these two transformations together would be to rotate the vector by alpha plus beta. So we can write this relationship, r of alpha followed by r of beta, they commute of course, is r of alpha plus beta. So this is neat, this relates all different sorts of rotations, actually rotations by all different sorts of angles. That's a very nice relationship, but now let's consider the special case of pi over 4. And if we rotate by pi over 4 twice, we'll get rotation by pi over 2. And what happens if we rotate by pi over 4 four times? Well, that will be a rotation by pi or 180 degrees. That will be a situation in which every vector becomes negative of itself. The image is minus the pre-image. And how could we capture this with a very attractive algebraic formula? Well, I believe it would be this. Rotation by pi over 4, four times successively equals minus identity. So this would be a linear transformation that turns every vector into minus that vector. It's quite boring, but it has great utility. So that would be a nice equation capturing what rotation by pi over 4 kind of does. Or at the very least, it's an equation that rotation by pi over 4 satisfies. Now again, what kind of algebraic equation does this remind us of? as it did in the previous videos. Not a very rigorous question, not a very rigorous answer, but I think we would all agree that this kind of looks like x to the 4 equals minus 1. And what are the algebraic roots of this equation? Well, there are none. There are no real roots. There are some complex roots, but no real roots. And not surprisingly, no eigenvalues, no real roots. There are some complex roots, as I said before, and that will get interesting when we talk about linear algebra, when complex numbers are allowed. So far in all of our discussions, we only used real numbers, and we'll stick to just real numbers for quite a while, but it will be specifically eigenvalues that will force us to talk about complex numbers. So there we go, rotation, a linear transformation with no eigenvalues or eigenvectors.